This is an announcement for the newest release of Vapor, version 3.6. You can see some of the new features on my screen right now. I'm going to run through the major features in a second, but right now you can see on the left side a slice renderer that can now be arbitrarily oriented. Previously, the slice renderer had to be coplanar with one of the sides of the data, meaning that you could only have a slice renderer that gave a cross section on the XY, XZ, or YZ planes. Now you can orient the slice however you want. This feature has also been extended to our contour renderer, which we see on the right. Previously, the contour renderer only supported 2D variables, but now it can also render uh, contours of 3D variables that can be arbitrarily oriented in the same way as a slice renderer. And I'm going to run through these examples in just a minute. Uh, but you also might notice, before I go on to that, a high-resolution base map underlying both of the animations. Very soon, we'll be releasing a Python script to our documentation linked below that'll allow you to download custom satellite base maps for your visualizations at higher resolutions than what Vapor previously uh, provided bundled with the application. Stay tuned for a video and Jupyter Notebook example on that as well. The last new feature I'll cover is a new data analysis tool for the flow renderer, which lets you integrate the values of a variable along a streamline or path line. And that should make more sense once I dig into Vapor itself and show you exactly how that works. So with all that being said, I'm going to crack open Vapor and go through the new uh, features in 3.6. So I'll minimize my Chrome window and I've I don't know if you call it cheating, but I have a session of Vapor already spun up. I'm not going to start uh, from scratch like I normally do in my presentations. But um, if you're already familiar with Vapor, uh, over here on the right we have a rendering scene. On the left we have the list of instantiated renderers that I've already created uh, through clicking on the New button. And then currently I'm looking at uh, the slice renderer that I've created. So the first thing I'll do um, and I'll just, I'll just note, I've already enabled my image renderer right here. So if I click on the image renderer, we see all the parameters for that over here, uh, including the new base map um, that we've created with a Python script that will be released shortly. So the, the, one of the main uh, new features in Vapor is, like I said earlier, arbitrarily oriented slices. And so I'm going to click on my slice renderer and go ahead and enable it. And this is uh, the setup from the animation that we saw on the slides a second ago. Um, the way that we can arbitrarily orient slices and contours is uh, in the geometry tab for those uh, respective renderers. So these new controls that we have, um, these orientation controls, um, allow us to rotate these uh, slices and contours along the X, Y, and Z planes. And you can see in, in this example, if I zoom out a little bit, we have a slice that has been rotated on X by 90 degrees and on Z by negative 45 degrees. But to give you guys a better idea of um, what that means, let's start from the base state. So if I rotate all, uh, all, all of my rotational um, axes by zero, and I go to my home position, I'm looking down at my uh, negative z-axis now, we have our uh, basic slice being rendered right now with zero rotation, but I can use these sliders to rotate it on each respective axis. So if I take my x slider and bring it to the right, closer to 90 degrees, now I have an, uh, a plane that is on the x uh, Y plane. Now that I've rotated it like that, I can also offset the plane. So there's this offset controller down here. There's a slider that allows me to drag the slice backwards and forwards through the domain uh, perpendicularly to the normal of the plane. And so if, if I were to take my Z controller, my, my Z rotation controller, and bring that over to something like I don't know, close to 45 degrees. Looks like I'm landing on 39.6 degrees right there. We now have a, a plane that's been rotated by 90 degrees on the X, 39.6 on the Y, and I can bring that back and forth through the domain with this offset control. 
So previously in uh, Vapor 3.5, all we could do is have uh, axis aligned planes kind of like this. But now what we can do is make arbitrary orientations to uh, get the uh, precise location that we need. This uh, utility, this, this, this method of arbitrarily orienting the, the sampling that we're doing through the data domain is also uh, has been translated over to the contour renderer. So if I disable my slice, enable my contours, it's the same kind of idea in my geometry tab for my contour renderer where I control where and how the, uh, the plane is being oriented. It's the same set of controls. Um, let's see, keep my X on 90 and then on Z. In the contour renderer, you, can, you might, may or may not be able to see this uh, green box that encapsulates the plane that will be rendered once I release the button. Whereas the slice, um, shows a downsampled uh, version for performance reasons. So right now I'm spinning the slice and there is still a green rectangle around where the slice will be drawn. But with a contour renderer, there is no downsampling. All you get is a, uh, a green rectangle that kind of gives you an indication of where the contours will show up once you release uh, the button. And just like the slice renderer, the offset controller uh, lets you bring the contours forward and back. I'm not sure how easy that is to see on the video, but um, if I just do a few iterations, you can kind of see how the offset controller is working for that. The um, last feature that I'll work through is a new uh, data analysis tool for the flow renderer. And so it looks like I don't have that one set up in my session, but I think it'll be a piece of cake to set up real quick. For the flow renderer feature, I'm going to disable my contours. And like all renderers you create in Vapor, they must be uh, instantiated by pressing on the New button. So I'll press on New, and I will double click on my flow renderer. And this, this new uh, data analysis tool is uh, called Flow Integration. And we have a new tab for it. So um, in my opinion, this feature will probably be moving because our options for the flow render are getting a little bit busy. We have a variables tab, a seating tab, appearance tab, and now we have, we've introduced the integration tab along with um, geometry and annotation. So just, just a recap, all renderers in Vapor at least have a variables tab to select the variable that's relevant to your renderer, an appearance tab to edit a transfer function and maybe some other things. A geometry tab, uh, all renderers have geometry tabs to control where you're drawing to, and then an annotation tab, finally, to turn on color bars. But the flow um, renderer is unique. It's complex because it also has a seating tab, which controls where you're putting the flow points in your renderer. And now we've introduced the integration tab, which allows you to color your streamlines and path lines according to the integration of a variable. Um, so let me, let me just... Uh, get started because I think it'll make a lot more sense once I get into it. So let's see, my variables are u, v, and w, which looks all good. I'm doing a three-dimensional flow rendering. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn that on. And the first thing we're going to get is, which might be hard to see right now, let me go to my home viewpoint. And we have a 5x5 five five grid of, st of streamlines on the xy plane. Let me go to my seating tab to make some modifications to that, make it, make it a little bit more clear. So I'm gonna do fewer integration steps. Let's just do 25 integration steps. Make these guys a little shorter. There maybe, let's see, let's go down to 10. Okay, so now my flow lines are a little shorter. It's still too busy though. And for demonstration sakes, again, this is a five by five grid of streamlines. I'm just going to do a one by one by one grid of streamlines within my uh, my seating region, which my seating region is shown by this red bounding box um, around my data domain. So, so now uh, if we look over on the left, what we have is a one by one by one grid of streamlines um, that originate from the center of our domain. So we have just one streamline. 
here in the middle. And now that there's just one, I might as well crank the length up because it's less busy. So we have one streamline right here, originating from the center of our domain, and our wind vectors carry it up at this single time step and then drive it back down. And we are coloring this according to, if I go to my variables tab, our color map variable B, which I believe in this case is buoyancy. So um, if I go to my appearance tab, I can see here's my distribution of my buoyancy variable um, within the domain. And you can see it gets less buoyant as it goes up to the top of this peak. And then, of course, as buoyancy uh, gets small, the uh, advection will drop down into more buoyant regions uh, near the surface. So, all right, I've set up my base case. We have one streamline. Time to show you guys what this new integration feature does. If I go to my integration tab, we can see another red bounding box around our domain. And what the integration tab allows us to do is to narrow down and recolor. It allows us to recolor the, um, the streamline along, an, along a certain region of integration. And so if I, if I reduce my red bounding box, like I'm doing right now, let's see, I'm going to make a little box like this, and I'm going to intersect it with my streamline. Okay, so now we have, you can see my streamline, which was colored by buoyancy, now intersects the very top of my integration bounding box. And it travels through and exits through this side over here. If I integrate, um, again, I'm in my integration tab. If I click on this uh, integrate particle values along a trajectory, I can turn that on and I have to go back to my appearance tab and uh, reset my bounds. What, what this does is it now, instead of coloring the, the streamline according to buoyancy, it colors the streamline according to the integration along the path within this box. And so we can see our initial point is right here, and it has an initial buoyancy value that is attributed to every segment of this path line until it hits this box where we begin integrating the values of buoyancy as it traverses through this region and then finally lands on a final value at the end. And then uh, this streamline just drops down into the earth, pretty much. But what this might be useful for is if you're interested in how your variable uh, you know, integrates through a certain region. And so what I can do now is I can go to my seeding tab where I'm controlling where my seeds are uh, initiated and how they are drawn um, through their advection, depending on whether you're doing path lines or streamlines. I'll go to my seeding tab. And what some scientists might consider useful is down here, um, actually this is something I think is one of the most powerful tools in the flow renderer. We can write flow lines to a file. We can write the data values of this flow line into a text file for further analysis. So I will select B for buoyancy. That is the uh, data variable we are sampling along this path line. And by default, it's in your home directory. For me, that's a users peers vapor flow .txt. I'll keep that and write it to the file. And that should have been written. So now that I've written it to my file, I'll open up a terminal and see if I can make this bigger so everyone can see it. And now let's see, cd into my home directory and I'll vi on vapor flow.txt. And now what we can see, let me see, it's still too small. Bring that bigger. Here are the samples in this text file. Let me get vapor a little smaller. So what Vapor is doing right now is it is sampling the data values along this path line. And each line in this text file uh, is a single sample. You can see the buoyancy starts at 0, 0, 0, 0, until at this point right here, if I go back to my integration tab, we can see it, it will display our box. At this point right here, the path line or the streamline has entered our box and has begun integrating values of buoyancy 
with each step along the path line until at this point right here where it reaches a value of roughly negative 8,000. That's the point where it has left the integration box and we can see there are one, two, three, four, five samples within the box where the buoyancy value changes. And uh, that, that's a feature that's been requested by um, some of our uh, heliophysicists. So um, I think they're, they're trying to integrate uh, magnetic fields. Uh, so that's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's an advanced feature of the flow renderer. I suspect that in Vapor 3.7, the integration tab will be merged with the appearance tab. But um, that's where we put it for now. And um, that might get uh, bundled together with the appearance tab in the future to make things more uh, simple from an upfront perspective so you don't have so many tabs immediately uh, in your face. Um, but anyways, those are the major new features in Vapor 3.7. Arbitrarily orientable slices, 3D contours that can be oriented arbitrarily, as well as uh, new data analysis features for the flow renderer. Uh, the last thing that I want to say is um, we want to thank everyone who participated in our recent user survey and that your feedback is really what drove these new features in 3.6. Um, it's also guiding us on the new features we want to implement for 3.7. And in 3.7, we may finally have a way to script Vapor through Python. So stay tuned for more information on that. And all, as always, um, please keep giving us more feedback so you can steer us uh, with future requirements and what you want to see later on down the line. I'll put some links to our Discord forum and our other uh, media or our avenues of communication like email below. So thanks again. Please keep the feedback coming and have a nice day.